Okay, so with um, so here's a parallel circuit, and the equation to find the total resistance of a parallel circuit is 1 over RT equals 1 over R1, 1 over R2, and 1 over R3. R1 represents the first resistor, R2 is the second, R3 is the third. So with the series circuit, to find the total, you simply add up all the resistors. In this one, you have a more complicated equation, at least if you have the resistance values. Uh, remember that total resistance is also called equivalent resistance, combined resistance, or effective resistance. So find the total resistance of three resistors of 2, 5, and 2. Well, here's the equation. Now, there's another equation to find total resistance I showed you up here. Um, it's just VT, uh, equal, uh, I'm sorry, RT is VT over IT. But we cannot use that equation, that really simple equation, because we have the three resistance values, and that's it. So we plug it in, and we get, um, hold on. Um, we get one over, uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 2. The common denominator of 2 and 5 is 10, so it's 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10 plus 5 over 10. Together, that's 12 over 10. But remember, at the end, we've got to flip it around. 12 over 10, if 1 over RT is 12 over 10, then RT would be 10 over 12. Uh, the more resistors that are connected in parallel, the actually smaller the total resistance. That's kind of a paradox, but remember that's really important. That's why it's yellow. So let's look at another example. We've got, um, oh, and by the way, every time you add a resistor in parallel, you add another branch of current, and you're effectively, effectively getting more current, and that's really effectively reducing the total resistance. That's, that kind of resolves that paradox. When you add another resistor, sure, you've added another resistor, but you're also adding current. If you're getting more current, you've effectively lowered the resistance. Now, here's a super easy equation. And if, you can, if you've got the total voltage and total current, definitely use this one for the parallel. But sometimes we don't like this next one. 3, 6, and 9, these are the three resistors. They're connected in parallel. So unfortunately, we have to use the harder equation. So it would be 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 ohms and 1 over 9 ohms. The common denominator of 9, 6, and 3 is 18. So this would be 6 over 18, 3 over 18, and 2 over 18, because you know 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and 6 times 6. At the end, we get 1 over RT is 11 over 18, but we're not done because that's what 1 over RT equals. So when we flip it, we get 18 over 11, and we can leave it but turn it into a decimal, 1.2 significant digits. So remember, if you can, use the easy one, total voltage over a total current, but sometimes we can't. Sometimes we only know the resistance values, and we've got to use this more difficult equation that's found on your reference table. Once again, remember to flip at the end, like I did, flip the fraction. All right, here's a parallel circuit. What is the equivalent resistance? That means the total resistance. So what do, what, what do we use, the easy equation or the hard equation, Eileen? Do we get to use the easy equation? We've got the total voltage, but which one? Do we, do we use that... Um, Hard equation of the easy one. What do you think, Eileen? Unfortunately, we've got to use this one because we know the two resistance values. So, of course, it would be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4, common denominator 4. So it would be, if you open pen out, common denominator is 4. So 1 over RT, 1 over RT equals 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which equals 3 over 4 ohms, well, actually it's not ohms, I'm going to erase that, 3 over 4, and then the final step is, once again, to flip it, 3 over 4 becomes 4 over 3, and 1.3 ohms, did you get that? Okay, so now find the current coming out of the source, this is of course a, well, what is it, a series of parallel, I mean, parallel, definitely a parallel, if you've got the branching, so they want the current coming out of the source, so like I've told you before, let's treat this as a crossword puzzle in the sense that if I don't know something right away, I know that I can get there by finding the other clues. It, let's get the good setup. VT equals, IT equals, RT equals, VT equals 12 volts. I, I don't know. I don't know the, those two other ones, but let's. what's the first thing you know? On your reference table, it says the total voltage is equal to the voltage drops across each one. So that's the first thing I always love to do. 12 volts across. Then I go down, and I know that V equals IR. So this is 6 amps, right? 6 times 2 is 12. V equals IR, 4 times 3 amps equals, I guess that should be 3, but we'll just leave it as 3. Okay, and, and um, okay, what is the total current? Now that you see the two branch currents, Eileen, what would be the total current? Get nine. the 9, of course. Let's go up here. I, 
T equals 9 amps, filling us in the oscilloscope here, 9 amps. And then what are you going to do to get the RT? Now we can actually use this equation, that simple Ohm's law, VT equals IT times RT. So 12 volts equals 9 amps times RT. I'm, I'm going to need your help. Do uh, divide both sides by 9. Do 12 divided by 9. Did you get this already? I guess it's repeating as in ohms. And notice, here's a weird thing. Notice that the total is less than the two resistors. That always happens. Could you write on the bottom of the circuit for parallel, total resistance always smaller than the smallest resistance. For parallel circuit, total resistance always smaller than the, um, than the it's always smaller than the uh, smallest resistor. So we found, by the way, we found a whole lot more than the total current. But uh, like I said, each clue gets you the next clue, so be patient with it. Um, and that's it for that one. Good. Uh, find the, now, find the potential drops across. Well, we did this already because they're equal to the source. We got, we got all these things, 12 volts, and yes, there, there it is. Now let's go to um, another series. This is a series circuit because it is could you, next to series circuit. Do you have that? Is it all still jumbled up? Yeah. Oh, I'll boy. Sort through it later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can help when the girls come in, help get, use yours to get the sort. Uh, series circuit, why is this series circuit? You write one path for current, no branching. One path for current, no branching. Okay. So find the equivalent resistance. That means the total resistance, RT. Equivalent resistance to total resistance. So that's super easy. Go to your, get out your reference table, and you're going to see why it's super easy to find the total resistance for a series circuit. Do you have that handy? Just read. Why is it so super simple? Read read out the equation for me. What is the total resistance? Atoms. Just atoms. That's super simple, right? Two plus one, so three ohms. Equivalent of total resistance. Find the current going through this circuit. Hmm. The current going through the circuit. So you've already found the total is three. So let's go over here. Let's let's set this up. Like I told you, so V T equals I T equals R T equals. This is three ohms. This is 12 volts. Actually, this. So once you set it up, you kind of you, you get the answers by a good setup. Um, what is the total current given this uh, setup on the left hand side? What's this? Of course, V equals I R. So 12 volts equals I times 3. Uh, what did you say? 3 ohms? That is 4 amps, right? Yeah. Okay. So what? So now let's go over here. And since it's 4 amps, let's, let's do the setup. V equals I equals R equals. V2 equals I2 equals. A good setup will solve everything. So you told me that it's um, 4 amps and the resistance is 2 ohms. And you said it's 4 amps. It's 4 amps straight around. So now you can see that V, you can get V1 and V2 super easy because of Ohm's law, V equals IR. So 4 times 1 is 4 volts. 4 times 2 is 8 volts. And check it out. 8 plus 4 is so all about a good setup. So I think we've solved everything in this. In this uh, I think we have. I don't think there's anything left to solve. We got the 4 amps. What's the potential? We did V equals IR. Now, uh, this, of course, is a parallel because there's branching. And so you can, let's see, what would be the first, do you have this? What would be the first thing you'd do, uh, Eileen, on this one? Ah, I, I totally agree. That's what I always love to do. The reference table tells me the, all these voltages are equal. Love that. And notice I, get, I gave you a nice little setup, the VIR setup, so it makes it super simple. Except I didn't give you this one. VT equals 60 volts. IT equals, well, I don't, oh, right there, look. 10 amps, and RT equals, could you tell me what a RT is, I think? That's super simple, isn't it? Because I use ohms law. So it is, how many ohms? 6 times 10 is 60. So look at that. The total is less than every resistor. Yep, it always is. The total is less than every resistor. It always is. Now uh, let's continue to do the crossword puzzle. I bet you can get, um, I bet you could give me I1. How many amp, oh, amps is that? I one, right? Yeah. Three, uh, three times three times twenty is sixty, and I two you can't get, but I bet you can give me I three, right? Because Ohm's law says two times thirty is sixty. Now the middle branch you can actually get because you know the total is ten. The other two branches are three and two. They equal five, so the middle branch is right because 
5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 amps on the top of the on the top of the circuit, feeding 10 amps down. Um, now you can get R2, can't you? Because V2 equals I2 times R2. So this would be 12, right, 12 ohms, right? V2 equals I2. It's all about a good setup, the VIR setup. So you got that? Good, okay. Now we, I don't think there's anything we haven't done on this, right? We did this whole thing. We actually just scoot right through. We, we solved everything. In a series circuit, for any 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 time current and the resistance are equal, voltage is proportional to resistance. In a series circuit, Ohm's law tells us voltage is directly proportional to resistance. That's because the currents are equal. The potential difference V across a resistance is proportional to resistance, directly proportional, isn't it? In a parallel, voltages are always equal. Why? Because the reference table tells me so. Okay, let's see. We've got a series circuit, one path for current, no branching. Um, if the voltage drop across a 3 ohm resistor is 4, let's go over here. Let's do the setup. So V equals I equals R equals. V equals I equals R equals. So this is 3 ohms. Okay, um, so the voltage drop of the 3 ohms is 4 volts. Let's go over here. Of the three ohm, this is four volts. Now, what about the six ohms? If they're proportional, Eileen, if three ohms has a voltage drop of four, six ohms has a voltage drop of eight. Right, because they're proportional. Twice the resistance, twice the voltage. Hey, check this out. Let's write. Let's go. Vt, it, rt. What is the voltage of the source? If the if this is a series circuit, the first the first one's four volts, second's eight volts. What's the total voltage? Because your reference table tells you that the the source voltage is equal to the sum of the two drops. Hey, you know what else we can find? The This is 6 ohms. That's 3 ohms. Isn't that 9 ohms? So that's proportionality. Because the currents are the same, that proportionality works. What's the total? I think we got 12 volts, right? And then if you do VT, let's finish this. Go on the left and do VT equals IT times RT on the left side. And you can see that the total current is 1.3 amps repeat. You know what? I don't want to go too. I don't want to go any further without. Remind me where. If I actually say we're in example nine.